If I get my audio on, I can tell you that was me performing live in London uh, a couple of weeks or so ago. And uh, now we should hopefully get uh, joined by uh, Maggie off of Fuzzbox. And hopefully this will actually work. Uh, let's see, we're doing it sort of rather uh, seat of the pants kind of thing and uh, see if it actually uh, it does work. So we're going to uh, find out hopefully all about her, her new exciting solo project which uh, we have the honor of hosting so uh, let's see if she can make it in uh, so yeah um i'm gonna play you a load of in interesting music videos in this and uh right, hopefully this should be uh, maggie joining us hello mags off of fuzzbox now a, a, a solo project which hopefully we'll find out about now hello hello can you hear me okay i can can you hear me i can indeed hear you okay that i think we uh, we seem good in that regard so that's a that's a definite good thing so right um let's get down to business i guess um and uh, you've got a solo project now so um tell us about it well, yes, I, I, surprisingly, at the age of 58, I've <laughs> got my first solo <laughs> releases. So, um, yeah, i um, appearing in Manchester with your very good self um, in July on the 16th. Yes, at, in, in, and I don't know how yes. you pronounce it. Uh, what, the venue? Yeah. I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I've always called it Atma, so... Um, uh, Atma. Atma or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, alongside Incubus Succubus as well. Top yes. notch gothness. So tell us about your um, solo-ness. What's it all about then? Um, Right, it's quite... Ele it, well, it's very electronic with a bit of guitar. Um. So 
it's it's quite different from first box well it, it is and it isn't in a way um obviously because vix is not involved in this it's more how i see melody and how i song write um vix is is much more traditional in her songwriting than i am um i'm quite a lot more left field you're the so goth. I, i'm the goth i'm the goth girl <laughs> i i am the goth girl but it, it, it isn't sort of straight goth although there, there are a couple of tracks that are quite gothy um but it's sort of electronic -y sort of yeah it's 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 different it's different and is there anything what would you say are the, the the artists perhaps that have if any uh inspired uh this new project then what is, is there anyone you can liken some of the sound to i've been told it's a bit um prodigy which is a bit weird that sounds um, very interesting well well i do like i do like my my music quite hard live i think there's nothing like it but then there's a few tracks that are very sort of atmospheric and you know sort of um it's 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 a mix of stuff it's which a is the best mix. way that's definitely the the best way of doing things i think well i think you know so first box was always a mix of things and the, it went from one extreme to to another you know when you look at at both albums you know so if there was songs that were like really hard edged on on boston steve austin and then you had hollow girl on it and then similarly there was a lot of pop stuff and then we went all enuresque with irish bride it, it's always been and beauty was quite a different one as well you know so if it's it's where we we come from yeah i know i i in my musical endeavors i like to vary things a lot so are there any what really was that main impetus to get writing your own material again um i think mainly that victoria left first box so um and i thought well do i just leave it where it is or do i carry on and do something different and so i I decided I'd give it a go at doing something on my own because no one's heard it really. No, I've not no even heard what it is, so it might be absolute rubbish. But I'm, you know, I'm taking a chance on you anyway. <laughs> There's a good chance it will be, isn't that? <laughs> Let's face it. But um, it's you know, so people that have played it too have liked it, but everybody says they like stuff, don't they? And then they go away and just go, "Oh my god, that was a bit awful." Um, so I, I don't know we'll, we'll wait and see um you know i'm working with some really interesting people so i'm working with somebody who is quite goth um you know him justin justin oh, yes, walker yes. Uh, i know justin obviously yeah so justin he's from in... chaos bleak yeah yeah who wasn't in so the chaos he... bleak interview that i did <laughs> <laughs> So he's he's him and he and I are very good friends. Um, so there's that influence, um, and then there's a girl that I'm working with um, from Glasgow, and she's she's 27. So, so it's she'll not be Claire bringing Claire Grogan then. No, I oh, I love Claire Grogan. I think she's amazing. She's marvelous. Um, she is absolutely fantastic, but. Um, no, her name's Jenny, Jenny Tingle, and she's the flautist and drummer. So there'll be some flute in there. I, I'm liking the sound of how this is mixing everything up very much. That sound, I mean, it's it sounds like you may be onto something exciting and innovative with this whole thing. It, I, I've been told it doesn't really, although so there's bits that sound a bit prodigy and a bit i've had a couple of other references but have been told it doesn't really sound like anyone else which for my money is a really good thing 
I, the prodigy with flute is not something that you, you, you <laughs> would ever sort of imagining would ever happen, you know, I mean, you know. No, not really. It, it, the two were very contrasting things, the sort of the softness of the flute with all the harsh electronics of Prodigy. So, so we can expect you, uh, you, know, you, you sort of throwing yourself around the stage in uh, the, the the Prodigy style. Then, yeah. Um, like, I, I, like I, I, my of... knees aren't what they used to be. <laughs> um, so, so we'll we'll wait and see. Um, I've been working on um, a look as well. Oh, exciting. And Fuzzbox so, in the olden days had a, a fabulously alternative look before you were, uh, went for the more traditional glamour style with the later era. Uh, so uh, we know definitely that spirit is in you. Um, it's, it's going to, it's, I've got, a, I've got some stuff and um, it's, you know, I'm going for um it because the the influence is um clowns, clowns and clowns, yeah, clowns, clowning, clowning. in so from yeah from from Chinese opera Interesting. and um from comedy does art, um so it's and I, I've got a thing about clowns. And, and circus. So you're a big huge... fan of the film, it then? Um, yeah, I, I, I like it. Um, What's better, the I'm... film, it or the TV miniseries? Oh, I haven't seen the TV miniseries. You've never seen Tim Curry as Pennywise. Oh, that's, that's just an iconic no. thing you've missed there. I have I to look it that was... up, don't I? And I remember thinking the first half of it TV was. Um, reasonably good and then the second half totally lost it but there you go that may be an issue with the story Stephen King he'll never amount to anything will he um... <laughs> no I, I've, I've got I have love um, there's the, the clown museum in Shoreditch and there's I don't know if you know this but every clown gets a little egg yeah I saw that on a TV show uh, I think it might have been Bargain Hunt or something like that. Oh, really? <laughs> so it's my ambition to get into the Clown Museum. That's what I want. I want my egg. I, want uh, I can egg. tell you someone else uh, very much. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually technically married to a clown anyway. You know, I married a right clown on, uh, when... Um, Megan and Harry got married. I had my own sort of little anti royal wedding gig and uh, got Darren of Leg Puppy to marry me to a uh, clown who was in his band. The service, the, <laughs> the touching service is still on YouTube. Uh, I, just, I have to see this. I might yeah. get some influence. Yeah, I mean, there you go have a look, a sort of a scary clown. Uh, we have a, a, a. I had a lovely wedding dress as well, so uh, uh, check that out later. <laughs> oh, this sounds excellent. Yeah, it, it, we raised some uh, a fair bit of money for the homeless that day as well. So, uh, seemed. Oh, that, that's even nicer. Yeah. So, I like it. So, would you say there's a, a more sinister or darker general vibe to your new material? Or, yeah, it, or is it different it, it moods is, for just how you feel? I mean, that's sort of my method. It's, it's, I will be doing lighter stuff, but generally it's, it's darker. Um, and, and that's just because of, you know, that, that's my preference, not because um, I'm intending to be brooding and, it's Whatever. just what comes out naturally. Oh, we lost you. Oh. You've lost your video. So, oh, just one second. My partner is ringing me. Just, just, um, just, what an idiot. He knows I'm doing this. Live TV, what? everyone. Uh, oh, honestly. No, he, he's just obviously wondering where I am instead of like <laughs> just waiting. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, like I said, not because I want to be dark and bruising, but just because 
um i i, I like dark dark sort of storytelling and i like something with a bit of an edge and you know i love pink sunshine and stuff it's great but um it you know my natural leaning is towards more dark subject you have said in the past you are really goth at heart so uh, i am very much looking forward to it and yeah it's funny that despite that you're the one who wrote pink sunshine so i I know but is but the thing is i mean i i I often say this there's it's very very boring if artists stick with a sound so to speak i feel i i like variety and i like to kind of be surprised every time and it's (laughs) certainly sounding like we're going to get something surprising and exciting from you in manchester and i'm i'm deeply honored you've chosen to uh, allow me to give you that debut I, I just it just felt right to do that um in in that kind of atmosphere and what have you i think I, i've always loved the goth crowd i think they're much more people i think i've got this really bizarre idea of go, what goths are you know um but to my mind as a, a subculture they're one of the kindest subcultures and also that they're, they're a lot more open than a lot of that they're, they're less restricted and goths musically and they like to have fun yeah they do they do um and, and that's the other thing you know so if i think you know so people that don't haven't been around gothic culture um goth culture not gothic culture, um don't really understand it it and you know so if, and I, I've always felt really at home you know right back in the day and it's it's about went to being alternative and expressing yourself I think uh, and um, uh, oh and Andrea says um, she uh, she's still exploring Fuzzbox and she loves Pennywise she just thought she'd add those uh, things in Andrea over oh. in America uh, yes yeah, so, hello Andrea Anything that you'd like me to uh, pop on the show music video-wise that maybe might sort of give us a thematic taste of what to expect or just something that's sort of more from the darker side, perhaps, that you've loved? I mean, maybe we've done Daniel Dats to death, but, you know, whatever, if that's... that's we some... have done Daniel Dats to death. Um, I'm just... Any Dax influence in what you'll be doing at all? There's always Dax influence. Um, I love that woman. Absolutely love love everything that she's ever done. Um, and she's another one that doesn't stick to no, she's a, a single sound. She's you know, so if, much like that, yeah. Um, you know, there's when I was young, which is like so different from her other stuff. And it's so beautiful. I mean, when you and, compare Pariah to Big Hollow Man, for example, you know, the, yeah. the, you can barely believe it's the same artist. And, and that's what's so exciting about her. And, you know, and then what she did with the Lemon Kittens before that, you know, so if it's, it, and then she, oh, yes, I love my Danielle. I, I suppose we'd better stop before we let you get on for uh, about an hour talking about your love for Danielle Dax. Yeah, uh, I think so. So I'm anything stop. you'd like me to put on, if you want a bit of Danielle Dax, fair enough. But um, Do you know, I, I, I've suddenly had an idea that I'd quite like to hear, if you've got it, A Forest by the Cure. A Forest by the Cure, right. Okay, we'll pop that on for you. I'll just... Um, uh, get it ready so that um, uh, uh, we can play it but uh, in the meantime as I said that's going to be uh, in Manchester on the 16th of July we get the mysterious and unknowable Maggie Fuzzbox performing some new unknown material which uh, is going to be an exciting adventure I might play an odd Fuzzbox track an odd fuzzbots track, you know, uh, uh, which one's the most odd? <laughs> I'm deliberately misinterpreting well, you, of course, but, you know. What's um, the most I, odd fuzzbots track? 
I am working on a goth version of Pink Sunshine, which I think is hilarious. I mean, um, I've already but... been there and done that, sort of. Oh, well, have you? You wasn't very North good, North. but... Oh, well, it doesn't have to be, does it? It's it's the spirit of it. Um, no, I, I I might do a couple of fuzz box tracks, so um, stuff that I've, I've done, already done. So, um, yeah, there might be, depending on how the rehearsals go and how many songs, how many new songs I can get in there. Right, I'll, I'll, I think I'll have to pop something else on for the meantime, but uh, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, I think uh, what we will pop on now is a bit of Incubus Succubus, who will be uh, playing with Excellent. us. So, uh, Excellent. So, thank, thanks so much, uh, Mags off of Fuzzbox, but now just okay. Mags, but we've got to use No, that. just Mags on yeah. her own. But, oh, boo-hoo. Uh, Mags, formerly of Fuzzbox. Anyway, uh, yes, thanks so much for joining me and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to debut your fabulous uh, new project. I'm looking forward to it. It's Everyone going to, is. It's going Everyone to be is a very exciting uh, uh, adventure. You're going to yes. be scared about it at all. Terrified, <laughs> literally terrified. Right, anyway, here's Thank You for Succubus performing live at my festival in Sheffield in 2019. Uh, Queen of Heaven, Queen of Hell, this is...
2019. <laughs> and there's the event for you. Join the nightshift.uk if you want to go buy tickets. I could give you the full event bright link, but that's far too many things to remember, the characters and so forth. Uh, right, I, I promised a bit of film review stuff, so um, I'll just quickly pop on the the um, trailer for Men, which is an intriguing one to discuss, I think. So uh, here's the trailer for Men, which I saw recently. Uh, where is it? Where's it gone? Uh, there we are, right. Here's the trailer for men. What are you doing here? That's the trailer for Men, or the teaser trailer at least. Uh, from Alex Garland, who was, I believe, involved in writing 28 Days Later, and he did Annihilation and Ex Machina, where he directed and wrote those. Uh, Annihilation wasn't very good, it was full of so many uh, sort of logist, well, technical errors with regards to the way the military behaved, and it just didn't really add up to the sum of its parts to be fair nice try but it just didn't work ex machina i really really enjoyed uh, about uh, android becoming human but anyway this uh, survivor of abuse uh, domestic abuse of a uh, fashion retreats to the countryside and ends up plagued by men who are all played by rory kinnear and all seem to have the same idea of her being guilty for everything that happened to the relationship. I, the man was forced to do it, which you know, some people say similar things about Putin and his invasion of Ukraine. Now, it's an intriguing film where Rory plays all the male parts in the film, and it, it gets a bit of stick from some saying that Perhaps it's a bit on the misogynistic side because all we're seeing is men being horrible to this woman, in effect, which, you know, we don't really need to go see a film to see that. And it never truly questions their narrative of her being to blame for what happened. And there's no real sort of resolution to the situation so to speak and I had listened recently to an interview with Alex Garland where he he talked of his opinions on what the film was meant to do but he seemed very vague and he didn't he, he seemed to be full of a lot of well I kind of want people to make their own mind up and so forth it's not necessarily a hugely scary film there's quite a bit of sort of body horror so to speak late on in the film uh, but the thing is it's only kind of like a giving birth type scene and you know women give birth but I think the film is it's good but it's a bit muddled and I can see how people read it as misogynist but then others read it as feminist so it's kind of a bit bizarre like that um yeah also I watched uh pistol let's let's get up the uh an image for Pistol, why not? I should have had one up for men, really, shouldn't I? Anyway, here's Pistol, the Sex Pistol story. Um, yeah, if the TV series is to be believed, then Malcolm McLaren was an absolutely horrible, horrible person, full of manipulation. 
I think the series has got some excellent performances. The John Lydon performance is quite something, and the Malcolm McLaren, very, very good indeed. Uh, I think sometimes it, it can be a bit, as Kermode says, chubby hum, when you get the moments where characters are coming up with songs and they're sort of gradually formulating them into the songs that we know could that have been handled another way? I'm not sure. Kermo didn't seem to think so, but they seem a bit sort of cheesy and on the nose when it's done. As a drama and a sort of insight perhaps into Steve Jones's Sex Pistols life, it's pretty good. I think just ever so slightly sometimes I think it can get a bit sort of fanciful in its storytelling and not always entirely convincing sometimes it just seems to get a bit lost in itself I think and that can detract a little bit uh, anyway let me see if I can get a forest for um, uh, mags I think we have that now so uh, yeah so let's have the cure a forest hopefully this will work as well <laughs> I did earlier include The Cure, A Forest, but when I did that, YouTube blocked the entire video, so I've replaced it with a rather fabulous cover version by my good friend Izzy Kirk, who at the time was performing as Tokyo Witch Hunt. 
And if you're watching the video and not just, say, listening to what I'm doing, then you will notice that it's no longer in sync. Well, if it ever was, anyway. Uh, who knows? Anyway, but what you will notice is that uh, my mouth movements are absolutely not matching what I'm saying right now. And why is that? Because I've played some commercial music, and like an idiot, I didn't record the stream as I was doing it. So, it muted the audio. But as opposed to just muting the audio as it was happening, it, it kind of mutes it a part way into the track, and then mutes for about 30 seconds or so afterwards. Thus, it removed a lot of what I said. And if I'd recorded it, that wouldn't be a problem. But I didn't, because I'm an idiot. Anyway, what I was saying here is that I went to Rock and Roll Cabaret at the Blue Posts in Soho, which is run by uh, Rachel Dark, who you may recall was on the show a few weeks ago with her Guru Honey Badger stuff and we played a show in Leeds together, and uh, she invited me down to that, so I thought I'd go and have a look. It's essentially um, mostly a burlesque thing, but you get all kinds of stuff there. I mean, there was an opera singer, there was rap, there was like a sort of pub piano, if you like, someone from the Blood Tub Orchestra, a steampunkish kind of band that sort of sing, um, well piano and well it's, it's just look them up anyway my friend Val's in in that anyway 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 um but what I wanted to say about it is that it's 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 something absolute essence of what performance is because this is it's not something that's commercial at all and what I really really enjoyed about it is the fact that it, it's done with such passion and energy and all just totally for the love of performance. This is performance in the raw. This is the absolute essence of it all and that's really exciting. Just these people with a passion to express themselves, be that by gyrating provocatively whilst wearing not very many clothes. Or, you know, someone doing opera, it, it, everyone was just all in that moment. I mean, you know, it's like the PA system was a PV uh, guitar amplifier, and that's it. But it, it worked because it was so full of life. It's the, the absolute essence of what performance should be all about, I think. Uh, so I'm going to play a, a track from uh, Rachel Dark performing, which was showing off that she can indeed sing very well, though she normally tends to use a sort of vocal processor on her Guru Honey Badger stuff. This is Marquisa Dark, I guess you could say, doing Demons Are a Girl's Best. The French are glad to die for love They delight in fighting duels But most of all, I prefer a count that gives expensive jewels A scar on the hand is quite ornamental The demons are a girl's best friend A bite may be grand But won't pay the rental on your humble plots Or help you down with the undertakers Get that ice. 
só é o seu voz He's your guy When the stock's so high But beware when I start to descend It's then that those louses go back to their spouses Demons are a girl's best That you must keep satanic But demons are a girl's best friend I've heard of affairs that are best kept masonic Cause little bites give big baguettes in the fucking end <laughs> Time rolls by and youth is gone And you can't straighten up when you bend But step back and step knees You stand straight and Gordon's face Demons, I don't make devils I make demons Are a girl's best So that was Marquisa Dark with Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend. If you want to go along to Rock and Roll Cabaret, it's at the Blue Posts in Soho. Your nearest tube station to that is Piccadilly Circus. Uh, it's still a bit of a walk, about five minutes though, so it's not too bad. And you get to walk past the windmill in uh, Soho, which is apparently a famous strip club or something. And Soho's original sex shop which implies obviously that there's an unoriginal sex shop around there as well. Uh, yet yeah, it's free entry, pay whatever you like if you want to pay, which, you know, always a good thing to do to support these artists that come along. I will be popping along to that. I'm performing on the 3rd of June. 3rd of June, that's gone, that's six days ago, you idiot. 3rd of July, uh, I'll be going and giving them a taste of insurrection near futurism. Right, I'm going to play a bit of a, a rather lovely band. Oh, well, I'll just first uh, respond to some of the messages on Twitch. We've uh, said um, Andrea wanting to touch Rob Smith's hair. What's this fascination with touching hair? If you touch my hair, it's just end up sticky and horrible because it's full of hairspray. And uh, uh, Mogzo did suggest that performing is better if you are alive, which... I think we can all agree on that. Anyway, a lovely band from um, Brighton, but they've moved a little bit away from there now. Uh, this They make absolutely astonishing videos. So here is Battery Operated Orchestra with Service Economy, hopefully. Let's see if this is indeed set up correctly. Right, okay, hopefully this will work. Service Economy, Battery Operated Orchestra. Now shut up now. Yeah. 
lack imagination But my creativity is beyond your articulation If you saw this with a smile But when you treat me like your slave I will teach you to behave I'm just making money Not your accessory I rule like Ptolemy Absolutely incredible video work there. So booelectric.bandcamp.com if you want to go buy that sort of thing. And why wouldn't you with how wonderful that is. Uh, I think now we'll have a bit of uh, Jamie Jamal as he's sort of been a bit absent from my things lately. So this is Sister from Another Mister. <laughs> Sister, 
sister gave the sister in Bristol who's been very kind on a couple of occasions to uh, let me stay over at his place and really enabled me to do some gigs when uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to do them otherwise. All right, that about wraps things up for this episode. Um, as Next up, I think we'll have a Goth City special next week covering things to come in Goth City. So uh, we'll have an interview hopefully, or a bit of video with uh, Joel, who runs Goth City. And to play us out, uh, we'll have my good friend, the Alpha Video, with Hide in the Dark. And I couldn't get the video to download, so I'm just going to play it from YouTube. So you're going to have to put up with a bit of YouTube screen clutter on there uh, whilst I play it. I'll just check, see, I think I can crop it, so I'll do that. Uh, so if you just bear with me whilst I do that. Exciting, exciting stuff, this. Right, there we go. So I'll have to get rid of me as well. Anyway, this is the Alpha video. He's not really doing music so much these days. Uh, but he produced an incredible body of work just with his iPhone. Incredible, brilliant sense of melody. And this is a lovely track to place out tonight. So thank you everyone. Martin Drums, uh, who joined us for the first time today, saying that he liked the squelchy bass on the Boo track. Right, Alpha Video, Hide in the Dark. Coming up now. 